Welcome back. In this video, I want to discuss the last three features in the edit page design menu um, uh, or the edit page design portion of the pages panel in Adobe Acrobat Pro. The background command allows you to uh, change that. So we're going to click on add background and I am just going to do a simple color change. Um, you can see it in the preview box here. If I had a file that provided a background, I can click on that. I can browse and find it. You can scale it, make it fit, all sorts of things. I am going to scale back the opacity of my color. It was just a bit too, this was at 100%. Take it down to 70% oh, or so. And... Uh, I could again be doing s scaling. I can say I want it to show when printing or not. Um, and when I say OK, I've added a background. Notice I've added it to both pages. That's easy to do, easy, quick uh, way to change a document that you've got. A question that we get asked more often is how do I add a watermark? Uh, our watermark is just going to be text and it's going to say this is copyrighted material. Please do not copy. Please do not make copies. Please. I can define the font, the size, make it more like 18. Uh, I could change the color if I wanted to. I'll just keep it black. Again, if I had a file, if um, a logo often is something you can use as a watermark, and you can apply it. Um, so if I click on that, I could browse to that. You can make changes. You know, I have text. If I wanted to put it on a diagonal, I can do that. Um, either at these set 45 or negative 45 degrees, or can set it at whatever degrees I like. Um, again, change opacity, those kinds of things. When I say I'm going to get rid of the, the rotation, change it to none and say OK. Well, let me come back here and show you something else. Uh, notice the location. Let's make this text a lot bigger. Uh, 36 points. So now it overlaps. Let me make it even bigger. The content here, uh, it in the middle where it says under in the appearance box under location, you can identify whether you want it to appear behind the content or on top of the content. That's an important feature to, to be aware of. Take it back to 18. Also, you can choose when you click appearance options whether you want it to show when you print or and or when it's displayed on the screen. If I say OK, I now have that watermark appearing on both pages. Pretty easy. There's one more feature we want to look at. We're going to do it in this video. Bates numbering. Let's add Bates numbering. It says, what number, what files would you like to add Bates numbering to? Well, we're going to add some files. We're going to go back to those classic video, or I'm sorry, classic InDesign tips and grep styles. Those two files that we looked at earlier, we're going to say, yes, we want to add it to these two files. Notice if I, I put them in this specific order, but if I wanted the grep styles to be first, I just select, uh, I selected 50 classic InDesign tips and I clicked on move down. If I wanted that to be first, I can click on move up. If I wanted to delete it, I would click on remove. Output options, this is an important thing to know. Where do you want it to be? But most importantly, do you want it to add these numbers to your original files or to a new file? 
This is going to add it to the original file, and I want to show you what happens. Notice we're overwriting the original files. We're saying OK. I'm going to say OK. And now it's asking me, OK, what do you want me to do and where do you want me to put it? We're going to be fairly uh, straightforward. We're going to make it 12 point aerial in the left. We are going to insert the date. And in the middle, we're going to insert the Bates numbering. Bates numbering basically says how many digits and what number do you want us to start with. We're going to make it a three-digit number starting with one. So number one will be 001. Number two will be 002, etc. If you wanted a prefix or a suffix, you could add that. I'm not going to say OK. Notice that you can change the format or you can just do it to some specific pages, but we're going to do it to all of them. All I get is a little message that says it's a Bates numbering has successfully been applied. The files don't come up, nothing else happens. So let's open the files. File open. It was the classic and grep styles. Let's view classic first because. This is the date that we put in and the Bates numbering. Now what's interesting, when I finish, I go to the end. When I open the grep styles file, the numbering continues. Number 11, 12, etc. Remember we said we wanted to overwrite the existing files. We didn't want it to save it as a new file. So these files now have the page numbering and the date applied to them. What if I don't want that anymore? If I come over here, go to Bates numbering, I can remove that. But oh my gosh, it only removed the Bates numbering. It also it left the date in there. Date when we when it did that, it treated the date as a header. And so when I come in and I say I want to remove the header, it says, "Are you sure you want to do that?" I said yes, and now I've deleted uh, the date. Let's do the same thing over here so you can see it again. We'll go to the cover page. We have page one. I've done this. Oh my gosh, I didn't really want to do it. I want a clean copy. I should have done it to a copy of the, the original instead of saying just save over the existing files. So let me get rid of it. Come down here to Bates numbering. Say remove. And also it didn't remove the date. I sure wanted it to. In order to remove the date, I have to come up here in headers and footers and say remove. There you go. And I have clean files. Of course, I have to save them, but I have clean files again. When does Bates numbering come in? One time that we find it most useful is if we have uh, um, files, uh, maybe uh, you have a markup of a document and you've scanned it in, but it resulted in a number of, of scan, scanning files, and you want to number all those files. So instead of numbering them all by hand, you can select them and say, apply Bates numbering to them. And then when you print out your document, it will have consecutive page numbers. That's what we find it is most helpful. You may have other applications for it. Well, that is it for our Pages panel training of Adobe InDesign Pro. Again, I'm Sandy Hovatter. If you ever have any questions about how to use Adobe Acrobat Pro or any other program, please feel free to give us a call or drop us an email. We are happy to help. hope that this training has been helpful, and we will see you in the next one. Have a great day.